Hey everybody, it's Mike over at Taxes and Bricks. Welcome back to another LEGO video. Today, uh, for the first time in a while, we're going to do a complete 100% full tour of the LEGO room, which we haven't done in a little while. Um, and I've changed a lot of stuff around since the last time we've even done a mini tour. So uh, without further ado, I am going to kind of spin things around and turn the camera and we're going to enter. So uh, up on the wall on the right, uh, same as it's always been, uh, the 1989 Batwing with the uh, classic TV and Batman uh, from 1989 cowl, the Michael Keaton cowl. Um, so that hasn't changed, and I think that's kind of its permanent home, unless I, I don't know, decide I want something different or it falls off the wall. I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, Lego City is basically the same. I've just kind of cleaned and tidied things up a little bit, made it less cluttered. Um, still have to find a home for the uh, lighthouse which I love, and as I look at it more every day, I just kind of love this set. It's kind of growing on me as one of my favorites. I didn't put the um, battery in to make it work because I don't do the power-up stuff because I've got enough batteries to charge and change in my life and I don't need another, but... Um, you're walking down Main Street, you get the downtown diner, you get the corner garage, the detective's office with the little uh, pool hall thing there, um, and then you've got the uh, police station, donut shop, newsstand combo, uh, Parisian restaurant, which is great. We've got the Palace Cinema, and then to the left of the Palace Cinema, uh, tucked back here, we've got the uh, Birch Books, the bookshop. Uh, across from the bookshop, we've got the Pet Shop, and then we've got uh, Cafe Corner, which is a nice old scent. And uh, a lot of people don't know, but uh, probably one of the more expensive ones to buy uh, online used, and uh, has like no interior details, which is kind of annoying, but you know, whatever. I've seen actually some people put interior details in them, but uh, to the left of that, we have this little kind of opening, and it runs back to the still incomplete Diagon Alley set. Um, I still have to do the uh, magic shop, the Weasley Brothers magic shop there. Um, so, I don't know. It's at home. It'll get done at some point. Uh, Brick Bank, which is oddly a corner non-corner you know set i don't know it's kind of a corner set but i kind of made it like this and this just kind of happened uh, accidentally but you know whatever i didn't plan for that so no skills when it comes to building and designing um town hall fire station with uh the fire truck which i don't know where that went um it's somewhere oh the fire truck kind of migrated over here but you know whatever i'll put that back in the front at some point and then uh green grocer and we've got the Grand Emporium, and then tucked away back here is Market Street, um, which is, I don't know, it's a modular, but not really. It's kind of part of, um, you know, a different kind of genre from the modulars, but, you know, whatnot. Uh, underneath, so you see this table's empty. I'm kind of starting getting amped, amped up here. We've got, as part of the backlog, all of these sets here, Ghostbusters HQ. We've got the Ninjago City, the City Docks, and the Gardens. We've got the Sanctum Santorum. And then behind over here, way tucked away in the corner, way back over here, eek, if you can see it, uh, Boutique Hotel and the Jazz Cafe. And all of those, plus um, poor Spring Lantern Festival, which will never get done, are going to adorn this table here. Um, and I'm kind of excited about that. So um, over above, uh, and I think tomorrow, I actually uh, just checked my confirmation, I will have the uh, next three helmets um set are coming for the star wars sets and i'm going to assemble those kind of right away and um i think i'm going to go up with them so i'm going to do three right here it's going to look a little lopsided and so for the time being i'm going to have to live with it and it'll be okay hashtag first world problems but whatever um and then hopefully i'll be able to get more helmets maybe they'll release another couple sometime at some point in the next year and we'll fill it all in and maybe there'll be an even number instead of an odd number 11 Whew. Oh, besides the fact that it's a one-on-one -on -one next to each other, it drives me nuts. But anyway, um, to the left of that, and you'll see some videos coming soon, um, my four aircraft, uh, three Technic helicopters, and this embargoed, canceled, controversial, evil Osprey, which there'll be a video coming out with, uh, I'll be coming out very soon, uh, doing the unboxing of this and the uh, setting up of this. And if you don't know, just, uh, you know, Google Lego Osprey and see what comes up. Set 42113. Um, it was a set that never made it to uh, the Lego stores. It never made it to any of the stores, really. A couple of them released. And I, by the grace of, I don't know who. Um, well, I do know who, but whatever. Got my hands on one. Kind of cool set. Um, and a cool kind of history and whatnot. So I decided to hang all of these from the bulkhead. And I think they look really, really nice. Um, and I, I wasn't putting them together because it didn't have a strategy for displaying them. They take up way too much space on a shelf. 
and I finally kind of came to this conclusion. Hang him from the bulkhead. Um, now, I've gone savage. I took down all of the pictures of my kids and my diplomas and certificates, and I'm using these shelves now for extra Lego storage. So starting left to right over there, well actually, we'll start right to left. Um, we've got the Maersk ship, um, the container ship. There are two of them. I have the other one, the older one. So I haven't put it together yet, but I will at some point. It's part of the backlog. Um, over here, we've got the Women of NASA, one of my favorite sets. I absolutely love that set. It's so creative and so clever. And I think just, you know, so often we think, you know, not of the women of NASA who made NASA possible. And this is a great set. And I think it kind of commemorates that. Uh, we've got the Ulysses Space Probe up there. Eek, reaching. And then ISS, the International Space Station, which I had to take pieces off of the back of it to get it to fit on the shelf because it actually sticks out in the back a little bit. So just to get it to display, I took some pieces off that you couldn't really see anyway when it was displayed, so I wasn't really feeling that. Uh, the Hubble. And then we've got the Saturn V, um, which I think, if it's not already retired, it's about to be. Um, let me head over here real quick because I took the vintage cars from the 19... The, they were, the sets were released in the 70s, but they are cars from the 20s and the teens. So you've got a Cadillac, you've got a Rolls, and you've got a Renault. Um, and uh, I put them up here. These are great sets. Um, and if you haven't, just go back and watch the video from a couple of videos ago. Um, I love these sets. Can't even begin to tell you. Um, we'll just quickly do this. Spring Lantern Festival. Eek! Turning away. We're not doing Spring Lantern Festival. Um, train sets are all basically the same. Uh, starting at the bottom, you've got the Lone Ranger train. And then there's uh, like a heavy haul train. Um, there is the Horizon Express. Uh, this one's like a city passenger train. Um, uh, Emerald Knight. Crocodile Locomotive. Uh, the Maersk train. And um, there's the uh, Burlington Southern. And then uh, that's another kind of passenger city train. And then there's the Santa Fe um, train up there. And then there's the train shed. Um, there's my big wooden minifigure. Woohoo! And then behind that is actually one of the things that isn't Lego up on the shelves, one of the only things. This was given to me by a friend of mine. I don't know if anybody's ever watched The West Wing, but it is a signed um, pink rubber bouncy ball um, signed by Richard Schiff from The West Wing. And uh, if anybody knows anything about the show, um, he uh, used to bounce this throughout the entire series. It was like his kind of signature thing. And a friend of mine um, either went to see him in, you know, uh, at a show or something and uh, got him to sign a bouncy ball for me because I am a big West Wing fan. Um, we got the Beatles, Yellow Submarine, um, Everyone, Everything, Every Darn, Whatever is Awesome, and I love that set too. Um, Flintstones, um, Central Park. I need to put together the apartments, but it's kind of too big, and I don't know what to do with it because it won't fit across whatever, so I don't know. We'll figure that out, maybe. Um, Seinfeld. I've got The Office somewhere kicking around here. I don't know where. i got to find it, put it together at some point. Got the shoe, the smelly sneaker. And then the itty bitty baby shoe with the person. Um, some of my funzy little like minifigure mocks that I got online. I just thought they were funny. Like here's Bob Ross. Um, there's Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> there's Vince uh, Vito Corleone from The Godfather. And um, there's Jack from The Shining. And I think there's like a couple of Batman ones somewhere that I got maybe near the Batman shelf. Here's another mock. I did not do this. I bought this online. I'm a huge Cobra Kai, the show fan. Um, my sister and I watch it. And I don't know, I was a big Karate Kid fan when I was a kid, so of course, Cobra Kai, the show, love it. Um, and you've got Johnny, and you've got um, Daniel next to the Cobra Kai dojo. Um, there's a little cruise ship, um, reminding me of all the cruises I've wanted to take but never have. Uh, Tron, the incomplete typewriter, we won't talk about that one either, and Ship in a Bottle. And then I've got some space below here, there's just some smaller manuals and things. Um, I don't know why I'm keeping the box from the wooden minifigure thing, but... Um, starting up top, this is a little bit different. I moved SOP with Camel. I moved the Discovery, uh, Shuttle Discovery here. Um, and I moved the X-Wing. Apparently there's another X-Wing coming out, a UCS X-Wing, uh, here in May for the May the 4th, um, release for Star Wars. So that'll be fun to see what kind of updates they do, um, on the UCS X-Wing. Um, and across the top two, I took mm, two of the F cars, the F1 cars, the Ferrari, and the um, Williams car, and I kind of put them on these little plastic stands, so you can't really see them too much at a distance, um, the stands anyway, but what's nice is if you're standing back, you can actually see more of the car, kind of like what I did with the Speed Champions here. I took the same kind of principle, 
and you know they're at an angle and I just kind of did the same thing with the uh, F1 cars here. Uh, the 80s nostalgia area has basically stayed the same. Um, I mean, I might have pushed a set here and there around just to kind of make a little bit more room, but uh, this is like 80s nostalgia alley. I uh, don't know what I'm going to do with the jazz quartet or the um, uh, dinosaur, dinosaurs, mother of God, Jurassic Park um, uh, diorama, but over here, I actually have another Billy shelf and I'm going to build it at some point, probably after tax season. And uh, there's gonna be a lot of sets right here. Um, so that'll be kind of nice. I'll move my build table someplace else. I don't know where, but I'll figure it out. Star Wars shelf is the same. I'm gonna get back into building some of the bigger Star Wars sets, um, clear this out and make some room for some more shelves with Star Wars sets. And I think I may actually just start, you know, with the big ones. Um, the uh, the uh, Star Destroyer and the Super Star Destroyer and the uh, Millennium Falcon, which are down in these two boxes here, and then Super Star Destroyers right there. That's new in the box. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to put together um, the gunship. Um, I will definitely put together um, the Razor Crest and the ATAT, -AT, but I don't know about the gunship. I haven't decided yet. I don't, it's just not, I don't know, I'm not feeling it. Technic Shelf is basically the same. Um, you got the motorcycle across the top. I moved the sailboat over and I didn't, I couldn't get um, Shuttle Adventure up on the shelves across where I put Saturn V. It's just a little too tall. The bulkhead kind of hits the ceiling. So it's parked right here for the time being. I find another home for it. I'll definitely move it. Uh, Technic shelves are basically, like I said, the same. Um, you've got the McLaren F1 car, the Lambo, got the uh, orange Porsche, the Bugatti, um, the Land Rover, my first Technic set. Oh, I love you. Um, oh, and I found this kind of neat thing. I was looking for a Land Rover emblem for something, and I found this online for like two bucks. And it's an actual like Land Rover emblem you put on a Land Rover car, but I thought, well, two bucks, I'll buy it and put it right here. I don't know why. Uh, I got the Jeep. Uh, a couple of other little rando cars. We got the uh, John Deere tractor. And I think there's another John Deere tractor coming out, which is going to be awesome because I kind of love that. Um, and it's a great, cool little set. I mean, if you're into smaller Technic sets, um, didn't take me very long to put together. And there's the Ferrari. Um, got the Ducati, which is a great Technic set that I think is retiring soon. So if you don't have it, go go to it. Um, got Dom's Dodge Charger. Uh, got the street bike. Got the um, the Porsche 911, the RSR. And then, oh, here's 42,000. The, uh, the F1 uh, car, the Technic F1 car unlicensed uh i got the raptor which there should be a video out and i just slammed together a mustang um i kind of liked it i think i did it wrong because it does the pullback thing doesn't work but eh, who cares um simpson's house i got the quickie mart somewhere i need to put it together um it's in the backlog i just haven't had time and i don't have a space for the quickie mart and my rule is i try not to put together sets that i don't have space for or i don't have a plan for um there is silver champions in all of her grody sticker glory because she was a used set uh, Vespa, Harley Davidson, got the uh, vintage pickup truck, which still has the Christmas wreath on it. Um, I won't say that I'm the guy that keeps his Christmas tree up until, you know, March. I'm not, but apparently I keep my Christmas wreath on my truck until March. Eh. Uh, let's see, Caterham 7, I've got the yellow Fiat, the blue Fiat's in a box. Deciding whether or not to put it together or not, I don't know. Um, Got the Camaro, uh, one of the most recent um, releases for the Creator Expert cars. Uh, I've got the Mustang, which was the first Creator Expert car I ever did. Um, got the Mini Cooper, which was the second Creator Expert car I ever did. I uh, got the white Porsche, the uh, Turbo, not the Targa. I didn't buy two of them. Some people did so that they could make like two versions of it. I didn't do that. Uh, the F40, which is so funny because when I first got this one, it was one of the first cars I got after the Mustang and the, um, the Mini. I think I got it. New in the box, but it was technically not released. It was retired at that point. Um, and I got it. I was like, oh my God, this thing's so awesome. And now it's like you kind of look at it next to something, you know, probably five, 10 years older and it, or newer. And it's like, wow, this the difference in the technology and the design is just absolutely incredible. So um, blue VW bus, the T2, got the bug, got the T1. Um, so it's kind of like Volkswagen Alley here. I uh, got a little movie theme going on here with uh, the Aston Martin. Uh, James Bond's Aston Martin, the creator car. And then, of course, uh, the Back to the Future car, which I think right now is the only one that comes with a placard. Um, and I hope they do more of those because I kind of like it. The little placards are kind of nice. Um, I really wish with the amount of people that come into my office that the placard says, please don't touch the Lego, but whatever. It is what it is. Um, 
I got the Ghostbusters Ecto-1 right here, and then we've got the London bus, which was uh, cool until I got to putting the seats in at the top, and that became very repetitive. Uh, just up top, we've got the Vesta's wind turbine, and then also we've got the um, medieval uh, blacksmith, and then the sailboat promo that came out, which is probably one of the best promos they've ever done. Um, not ever, but like recently. Um, and one of the only promos that I've actually really put together. The rest of the promos kind of sit around, and I don't know that I'm going to do them, but we'll see. Um, I'm not going to go through the architecture sets. Watch the architecture video, because I do that. That's back probably, I don't know, eight, nine months ago that I got them all kind of finished and done. But they're all here. The only one you don't see right now is the um, Great Wave. And that's because I haven't done it. Um, oh, sorry, the Pyramid. The Great Wave is an art set. The Pyramid is not done. The Pyramid of Giza. Um, I don't have a space for it. Again, rule is if I don't have a space for it, I don't put it together um, because then it just sits in a random spot and bothers me. So um, for now, this is what we got. Um, I will do some rearranging and figure out what to do and kind of get it all squared away uh, that way. Tonight, I am going to stay up late and buy the next four Speed Champion sets. So I will be up at midnight. I don't know how. Um, coffee, Red Bull, I don't know what. Maybe I'll take a nap beforehand or whatever, set an alarm, but I will be up at midnight to buy the next four Speed Champion sets because I have all of them. Um, and I don't know exactly where every single one of them is going to go. I actually have a sort of a thought. There are eight stud wide cars, so they are this big, not this big. And uh, as such, they um, take up a little bit more space. So I've got a little bit of room down on this shelf here with the McLaren and the Kona Seg. And I have some, some thoughts. Not quite formulated yet. I've got one spot here I could put it, um, put one of the cars. But um, this is kind of like movie, again, like movie themed. So I could, in theory, move the Countach up here and say it's from the Cannonball Run movies. And then I have an extra spot here for maybe something. But I don't know. Anyway, they'll come. I'll put them together quickly and then do whatever. Arctic and Batman has not changed, but there is a Bat Cycle, a Technic Bat Cycle, and a The Batman um, Batmobile coming out, or that is already out, that I need to put together. And so I'm going to work a little bit on the Bat, uh, whatever. Oh, I got a question um, in, the, in the last tour. Somebody saw this. No, it's not a real Bat Pod. <laughs> This is a mock or so, like a model that somebody did. I saw it online. It wasn't expensive. I bought it um, and put it together. So it is not the like promo bat pod that came out, I think, when this was released, like a bunch of years ago. You get a new one like this. It's like $1,700 to $2,000 because they released so few of them. No, that is not a legit real bat pod. Um, and so to answer that question, no. I am not insane and I was not lucky enough to get one and I will not spend $2,000 on 17 pieces and two giant wheels. Not going to happen. So anyway, um, the only other thing that's changed a little bit is I moved the uh, coins up front here and I moved the Mars rover um, a little bit here. So the NASA space sets are kind of spread out. I don't love that. I got to figure out a place to kind of put back um, all the NASA sets together um, with the exception of the ones that are up there. Um, so we'll figure something out here. Um, other than that, I think that is it for the entirety of the Lego room and what has changed and what we have. Um, the only other thing is the backlog and I'm working on it. Um, as I kind of get clear of some of the new sets that are coming out for March, also tax season is kind of a pain and I have a lot to do, you know, to actually make, um, money to buy more Lego. So I kind of have to focus a little bit on like my job. And so not building so much, but um, these should be cleared out in the next several months. And um, I'm going to kind of start working on this table a little bit. Uh, a lot of these sets too, by the way, somebody asked me, are not sets that I'm going to assemble. They're sets that I figured, you know, they are, you know, on sale now for MSRP or you can get them at Amazon for a discount sometimes. And so I buy them because I figured to myself, you know, maybe in three or four or five years, my kids will be old enough and they'll want to do, you know, the tree house or they'll want to do, you know, a Harry Potter set or something like that, that I'm not super interested in doing um, because it doesn't quite fit with how I want to keep my Lego room. And if I wait five years and it's retired, you know, a $200 set or a $100 set or even a $50 set is going to cost a fortune um, on the secondhand market. And so I kind of, you know, you hedge your bets, you buy them now. Worst comes to worst, I mean, again, I'm not a Lego salesperson. I don't, you know, invest in this stuff. You know, I know you can sell them. 
um, or, you know, whatever. So it, it is what it is. But um, I've been starting to buy some of the Christmas sets because I know, you know, the kids might be into that at some point. Ooh, that box has a dent in it. Ooh, that's not fun. And that was new. I got that one from Lego. Shucks. Anyway, um, so I think that's it for today. I don't have a lot more to show you. Um, so uh, that being said... Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed all my videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share my content with your friends, and, um, you know, have a great day.